In May of 2021, Apple Search Ads gave us a new campaign format. These are called Search Tab Campaigns. And to use Apple's words, it's a way for your app to be seen before users are searching for it. So we're definitely going to cover the Search Tab Campaign format. But before we do, I want to go over their original format, and that was for Search Result Campaigns. So we're going to go over that one first so you can see what the differences are between the original Search Result Campaign and the new Search Tab Campaign. If you're not familiar with search tab campaigns, that's okay. I'm gonna cover both the original App Store placements. To be more specific, I'm talking about the App Store search results, pretty much the original Apple search ads format. And then when we go into the App Store search tab campaign creation, we're gonna be able to see the difference between those two campaign formats. So no matter what, let's go down and create a campaign. Then you'll have to search for your app. You can just start typing in the name, the app ID, or if you already know where it exists in the iTunes store, you can copy and paste that URL. First, we will go over the search results format. After we've chosen where our ads will be run, we just have to pick our country or region. And then after I scroll down, we can continue. And as you scroll down, I already entered in just a basic ad group name. And for now, I just applied the suggested cost per tap. That is the max CPT bid. It's cost per tap because you have to think people are downloading these apps on their mobile or tablet devices. So when they see your ad, they will tap it literally within definition with their finger to open up and see if they actually want to download your app to their devices. Typically, after I go ahead and start adding in keywords or audiences, I will go back and adjust my CPT bid. But before you can start adding any keywords, words, you're forced to at least put something there. But underneath the ad group settings, we see search match. This is essentially DSA for Apple search ads. If you're unfamiliar with DSA, we already have a couple videos. The one up above right now you're seeing is for Google ads, dynamic search ads. But then we also have a video for Microsoft dynamic search ads, and you can find that one right here as well. Pretty much what this means, when you submit your app to the iTunes store, your app clearly has a name, and then you have to fill in a description about what your app is, the features and so on and so on. Well, all that content you're filling in about your app when you're submitting it to the iTunes store can be matched with user search queries when they open up the app store to try to find a relevant app that will just meet their needs. Apple can take the content from your description and of course the app name and tie it into user search queries. Just like DSA within the search platforms, this can be really helpful if you've either run out of keyword ideas or you're looking for ways to expand and you're not seeing any new ideas that have verified search volume. You do have the option to turn this off and then you can run purely on a keyword or audience focused search campaign. Or if I go ahead and turn it back on, you can run the search match feature concurrently with your other targeting options. So if I scroll back down, here we can look at adding our keywords. So I already added certain terms like fitness. I can go ahead and start adding those. So if anyone typed in fitness, we can try to have our ad show up there. We have our default max CPT bid. That was the one that was recommended, but I can adjust it here as well. And then we can choose the match type. No phrase match. Even if I had a keyword with more than two words, it is just broad and exact. So if I add in a few more, I do have the option to X these out if I want to remove them, but it's fairly easy to just start searching for specific keywords. So now I'm just going to save it. And then you can hone in on your audience a little bit more specifically. So we have devices. This app that I'm using right now for the demo is only available on the iPhone, but if you do have apps that fit both iPhone and an iPad, you will be able to select between the two. And you will also have the option to choose both. Then we can look at customer types. And here's where you can kind of segment the audience. Do you only want to reach new users who've never downloaded the app? If you're a brand that has multiple apps all within the same account, you can try to use the activity on your other established apps to drive new traffic to your new app and then returning users of whatever apps are within your account. This can be great to promote new features, app updates, that sort of thing. And then of course, the first option, choosing all users. But in this case, I want to do new users. Then the next three options I'm not going to get deep into, they're pretty self-explanatory. Genders and ages, choosing your locations, and then ad scheduling. Maybe I should hop into this one. In a few examples, I just clicked and dragged just to show you you can set specifically what days of the week and times of day you would like to run. And I love when the platforms give you the warning that your ad scheduling is based on the user's time zone and not your ad account's time zone. So definitely different than what Google does. And if I scroll down, Unfortunately, I had to blur out this portion so you can't see who it is. But if you look at the highlighted options right here, it's pretty much mimicking the ad preview. You can see off to the side, these are the creative sets. They're going to see the main app logo, and then those three long rectangles that are part of the ad are the creative sets. They're pretty much screenshots and app preview so people get an idea of what the app is about and what it looks like. 
Now, if you look down below, we can see that you can add specific creative sets for ads and you can control what users are going to see for the ad experience. Since it is an optional element, if you don't add those, the users will see the three options that you use when you uploaded your app to the store. So this can be beneficial and we've used creative sets to differentiate the experience when we are segmenting the audience. People who have never seen the app before or potentially have never heard of your brand before, what images or previews would you want to show them compared to someone else who may know your brand already or already has the app on their device? Think about that experience because you do have the option to control it. And then if I scroll down, we can just create the campaign. Now when we're running specific placements, on the Apple Store search results, you can do that from the Apple Search Ads basic account or advanced account. And we can see if we're looking in the top left here, I am in the advanced account and I'm purposely in the advanced account because the other ad placements, which we're going to talk about now, the search tab campaigns, they are only available as of right now as part of Apple Search Ads Advanced. So I'm going to go and click and create a new campaign. I've already gone ahead and chosen my app. And then instead of search results, we want to pick the second option the newer search tab option. And looking at the description, we're saying it's promoting the app at the top of suggested apps list when users visit the search tab. So we're gonna proactively show it without users specifically looking for something related to your app. Again, we're gonna have to choose our country and then we can move on. I just went in and added my group name, but already we see some clear differences. Right off the bat, there is not a recommended CPT or cost per tap. I can only add a max CPM. I just pasted something in there for now. CPM bidding in Apple search ads is just like any other platform. So a maximum CPM bid in Apple search ads is going to be the most you're willing to pay for every 1000 ad impressions just on the iTunes app store. For Apple search ads, an impression counts every time your ad is at least 50% visible for at least one second. I'm going to repeat that again. An impression is going to be counted in Apple search ads when at least half of your ad is visible for at least one second. And the reason we only get a max CPM option is because we cannot target keywords for this campaign. We have all the same options for audiences. We see devices, customer types, the same four options there. Pretty straightforward. I'll quick preview demographics and locations because we didn't look at it last time. So under demographics, we have the genders and then our age ranges. They'll let you choose specifically each individual age, not necessarily a range. So you can be flexible on what you want the specific age range to be. Then our locations. Notice that it is just city and state. And it is just city and state specifically because remember in the campaign setup, I already selected my country and then ad scheduling exactly how it was before. So since the keyword options are gone, I should note that the search match option was also gone and scrolling down, we just get sent straight to the ad preview. We do not need creative sets for this particular format because look at the example that we see in this image. That is how your ad is going to appear. Those three columns with the app previews are not going to be part of this ad format. And if I highlight the explanation right here, I will read it for you. If it's tough for you to see the ads for this format are automatically created using the metadata you provided for your app store product page. Your ad will automatically feature the app name, the app icon and subtitle. So yes, there aren't any keywords here, but again, using the metadata, this is almost like a search match on its own, but you're going to be reaching people when they aren't specifically searching for your app. It could still appear when users are searching for something related to your app. Absolutely. But at the same time, there are going to be certain audience signals, depending on who that user is, when your app can appear as a recommended app for them to download. If we scroll down, I can then choose to create the campaign. So between the two different types of ad formats on Apple search ads, we can see one has a deeper intent. I will always recommend to start with the Apple search results format. First research what keywords are out there. If there is a lot of search intent on the Apple app store, maximize that deeper intent first. Then if you're not using search match concurrently, you're trying to segment out those different types of performances, then try a search match campaign. See if you can spread your reach still with search intent, but try to find a different audience based on the content that you use in your app descriptions. Then if performance is still good and you're looking for ways to maximize the reach, first I would look at the recommendation section within Apple. We already created a video on it. This could be helpful on how you can update your bids, give new keyword suggestions, and also give you information on how you could better adjust your budgets if you're finding great results from Apple search ads. I actually think this is a valuable tool to use because for my clients who are running successful app campaigns on the platform, 
volume is limited. So even after all that, you're still finding ways that you want to grow, but you just can't do it with the typical search results campaign, then go back and start creating a search tab campaign. See if you can expand your reach to audiences who could be interested in your app. From our initial experience, and this has been fairly new, the results aren't nearly as great as a typical search results campaign. And that makes complete sense. People aren't searching for my app in this particular moment. They're looking for new ways to expand. We're trying to introduce our brand to someone who wasn't looking for it at the time. Think of it more of along the lines of a display, top of funnel, or discovery type ad. We're introducing ourselves to them. While we still get taps, we still get people interested, and we're building audiences from that initial app tap interaction, but we are investing in search tab campaigns once we feel we're truly maxed or capped out on what we can do with search result campaign types. And that's pretty much what we have for this video. We just wanted to make sure that you know what options are out there. As we said in the intro, Apple Search Ads doesn't have a ton of updates that they release consistently. But when they do come out, we'll be sure to report them. If you have any best practices or favorite strategies to use for Apple Search Ads, whether they're positive or negative, let us know in the comments below so we can talk about it. Thanks for watching our video. If you found it useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week. So if you want to see more from the Paid Media Pros channel, be sure to subscribe.